Welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. It's Inktober, and it's time to get out the pens, dust off those kneaded erasers, and let's be drawing with ink. So start out with uh, your number two pencil. You've got your Pigma Micron pen and your kneaded eraser. But with our number two pencil, we're just going to define where everything goes. Now, I have to tell you, this is kind of boring, smack dab in the middle like this. And so I think what I'm going to do is move the castle off to the side and do more of the bridge coming in this way. And so when I when I look at this and I think, well, okay, I can see the picture's smack dab in the middle. I don't know if I can do that on the photograph. Oh, that's as far over as we go. So I'm just going to pretend that I see more of this bridge. Maybe we'll even put another uh, little arch on the bridge. I don't know if it's there or not, but if we do that... It's going to be a lot more interesting and just have it smack dab in the middle. So I'm just going to move this over and I, I want the most of the tower to be about right in here. So I'm just going to do a little rectangle and this is this is the brunt of the tower. Most of the tower is going to be right there. Uh, you got that little little bit of a boat dock or whatever that is right there. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a chain or a rope that goes up to this. This is how they would actually load things. They'd bring the boat over here, unload the cargo, and then they would crank it up this little this little pulley up into this area and then load it into the castle. So anyway, that's what that is. Sometimes it helps to know what something is. I don't know. Oftentimes I draw things. I have no idea what I'm drawing until maybe later, and then you go, oh, I get it. I know what that is. A little, a little wider. I guess I wasn't quite, quite wide enough. I don't want. I, I kind of don't want my tower to go too far up there, and so I'm just gonna kind of start with at the top and say, well, I, I want it to end right there. You want to leave yourself a little bit of space for that. Uh, there's a weather vane that's up on top of there. Leave, leave yourself a little bit of space for that. Cool thing about drawing buildings is they're not very intimidating, you know, because if, if your roof is too tall or too short, nobody really cares. When you start drawing people, you got to get those pretty well set because everybody, you know, if you put an eye in the wrong place, everybody knows it and they'll all tell you about it. So triangles, squares, rectangles, that's all we have to deal with when doing stuff like that. Remember that if you make a mistake, don't erase it until you draw it right, and then erase what's wrong. And I really do like this little bridge that's across here. Of course. But see, don't you think that composition is more interesting than having it smack dab in the middle? I was at Fort Ticonderoga a couple weeks ago, and this family was taking pictures, and they were trying to do selfies, and there was like five of them in there. And so I said, oh, here, let me take pictures for you. So I started lining everything up, and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, i got to get good composition here. I want your pictures to look good. Hopefully they appreciated it. There's one little arch, and I think I'm just going to see that arch and do another one over here. Just 
just because that's more interesting. And for your shine, if you just kind of block in the darkest areas, that's not how we're going to draw them, but I'm just blocking them in so that I'm not, um, so I remember what it is that I'm doing. And then the, all the trees and everything in the background, we'll do very, very lightly. Whenever you're drawing perspective, things at differences, at distances, um, you just got to be thinking that heavy, dark things come forward and light things go back as far as line goes. If you want to, you can put in like the little, the little supports that go underneath. Uh, you can put those in too, but just kind of as a, a slight arch. Anything that, so our towers are round. Anything that goes above your eye level line is going to curve down. Anything below your eye level line is going to curve up. And whoever took this picture was on the shore. So their eye level line is down here somewhere. And these are just guidelines for me because it's all going to be done with ink. So simple shapes, quick guidelines. Don't don't spend too much time. And you could block in where the windows go with just little shapes. Like if I go down here, there's one window, there's another window. And that, that would also be the, the little upper parts of those windows. There's one down here. So anything that you really draw here, just, just don't get too attached to it because you've got to erase it anyway. But once you get to those basic shapes, and I probably drew more on here than I, I really need to, but um, I'm ready to start. And I, I don't know where you start. Uh, I get asked that all the time. Where do you start? I don't know. Top to bottom, left to right. That's kind of what I do. So I'm going to zoom into this just so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to start with with the top. And I could even put in that little um, that little finial that's up there at the top. And it has something on it. I have no idea what's on it. So I'm just going to go do some little dots and dashes. And like I say, I have no idea what that thing is. But... If you put little dots and dashes and everybody thinks you know what you're drawing. Even though you don't. You just go, eh. It's not that big of a deal. Nowadays, we look at them and we say, hey, that's, that's really a cool little finial. But uh, back then, they weren't attached to anything as far as lightning rods go. A lot of castles were hit with lightning and burned to the ground. That was that was a problem. Nowadays, these little things are grounded. They have a rod that goes into the ground. So on the right side, our light source is coming from this way. So everything on this side is probably going to be very light. I'm probably not even going to hardly draw anything over here. But over here where a shadow is, I could probably draw a lot of stuff in there. So I'm just going to start out, and this triangular shape that goes down the side there, it's pretty dark. I'm just start out with some little dots and dashes. And just kind of go down like that. I can always come back in and add more.
I'm barely touching the paper, just letting that just kind of skip across the surface there. My roof was a little bit too tall right there and right there. So I'm going to just leave it out a little bit. I'm going to come over. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. There we go. I'm going to... This is really dark, and it's really hard to see what's in there. And so I may want to just throw that in there. I know there's a little archway right there, something like that. I may want to throw that in and just hatch through it, because I know it's going to be dark. Like I said, I, I can't really see what's going on in there. So it's the shape of that triangle that's important. And we just kind of hatch through it. Scribble, if you will. There's a little shadow under there. Just going to scribble that in. Little dots and dashes. That shadow that goes down there. Look at the shape of those shadows. This one's a triangle. We're just going to throw in that little triangle. And I'm not thinking of this as a roof. It's just shapes of darkness. Look at the shape of the things. Here's a little shadow that goes over there. Just draw that in with little hatch marks. If it's light, leave it out. So this edge of this, this window is very light. You just leave it out. And just like we did with the sphere, we're going to have to clean up that edge a little bit because it is a tight edge. You just scribble into it. little arch right there that's kind of dark. It might be a doorway. More than likely is. Just going to hatch through this. And I can always go darker. I look at it and I think, yeah, I need to go darker, but maybe not right now. Whatever the shape of that thing is, just darken it in. Now, we need something across the, the top of this building, this roof line here. If I got rid of my pencil, which I'm going to do right here, just, just because, you can kind of see where the roof line is. You might want to put a little dot maybe there just to show where that's at. Or you may want to just leave it if you think, oh, I don't need anything up there, but just... I just put in two dots, and that that draws in that edge. That edge is gone, but you as a viewer, you can see it. Up in here are some little windows 
really hard to see. They're just little rectangles. So I'm just going to put in little little dots, try to make them kind of rectangular. So it kind of looks like a little window. And that's it. As long as that's in that shape of that rectangle, it's going to look like a window. And there's a little shadow of the window sill. And down the side, there's a little shadow that's right there. You just go ahead and leave the rest of it out. Again, if you think to yourself, oh, I need something in there, a little dot or dash or something, I always come back in and put it in later. But just leave it out. Let it go. Edges will take care of themselves. Here's the edge of that. Um, so that tower is probably hexagonal or octagonal. And so where it kind of meets together up there, I'm just going to do little dots and dashes. And again, you can see that edge. You can feel it. You see where it goes. You don't need a line there. And like I say, you can always come back into it later and add some more. So just the edge of these little lines that I'm doing there. There's another one over on this side. I'm just going to put it in with little dots and dashes. There's the top of your tower. You don't need much. In fact, it's better if you don't. It looks better. And you can always come back in and add into it. I was too tall on this one, too. It's level with this one. So if I come over here and kind of try to draw a line over here and put a little dot there, a little dot over here. Hopefully that looks better. Get rid of my graphite. Little dots and dashes. Here's the shadow under that eave. It's just a little triangle. And then below that is another little triangle. I'm just going to throw that in. Until it's about what you want it to be. The other little tower was in the wrong spot, too. That's okay. You can even have that little finial. You can put a little dot on the top and just have it hanging out. It's not attached to anything. There's some very light little hatched lines just to show where that value is and a couple little dots if you need them i love old architecture it's just so interesting there are two little windows in there and let me show you how to do windows uh, windows, especially castle windows that are tall and thin like this, rather than do a rectangle all the way around, you kind of figure out where your light source is. And since our light source is coming from our right, which means that the shadow on the windowsill is going to be on the right as well because it goes in. And so you just kind of pick up and do a little 7 or a little upside down L. That's one window. And the other one just goes next to it. Now, if there was glass in this, 
you can put a little dot down at the bottom like that. You can hatch through it a little bit. If there were glass in it, that's about all you'd need. But there's no glass in this, and so I'm going to hatch through it a little heavier. This one, too, hatch through it a little heavier. A couple little dots and dashes, and that's your window. Piece of cake. Anytime there's a dark edge, that usually is a shadow. All right, let me show you how to do rock. I cannot see what's going on with all this rock, but you see there's a darker edge here, and it's lighter over on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do little meandering lines. I'm going, let me show you this a little bit bigger. I'm going back and forth like this, meandering, and some are long, some are short. Just back and forth like this. That's, that's kind of my technique. And you can even kind of wiggle your hand a little bit on the bottom because those rocks, they have texture to them. Those brick have textures. They're actually cut stone. So you can go in and do some of those little textures like that back and forth. And it's just really small. And I'm just going to do these little meanderings back and forth. Little dots and dashes. And where it hits that edge, I'm just going to stop. You can even, if you wanted to, you could draw yourself a little line there. Say, this is where my edge goes. Sometimes I'll even take a piece of paper and just lay it in there. And just leave it like that. And then as I draw, I just go back and forth. And I just go right up to that edge. And that, where you start and stop creates the edge of that shape. You don't have to draw a line there. And then on this side, you do the same thing, but less. So I would come over here, and I'd have the same thing going on, but use less line. Back and forth, little dots and dashes. And you basically want to go as far as you feel like you need to. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. There is a little bit of inlaid cut brick that are here, and inlaid cut rock. So I might delineate that a little bit. I just leave it light, nice and white. Just very light, light, light. There are some ribs in this. There's probably it's probably a copper roof or a metal roof. I'm not sure you even need it. I probably just leave it out. You can always look at it later on and go, yeah, I kind of need that. But for right now, just leave it out. And, and again, this takes practice. Remember, I told you guys I did like 200 drawings in a sketchbook before I even thought I knew what I was doing. So it does take practice. You know what Michelangelo always said? 
Michelangelo Bonarotti. You guys know who that guy is? Yeah. Probably one of the most famous artists ever. He said, if everybody saw how much I practiced, my artwork wouldn't look so amazing. I think that's that's very true. These little windows that are in here, that it does have glass in it. And so just do your little sevens and then leave some of that out. Maybe a few little dots and dashes, but there's a lot there that you can leave out. So for example, over here, and you can draw them in with your pencil if you're if you're a little uncomfortable. There's a little L, a backwards L, right below it's another one. And that those windows are very thin because they're curving away from you. Same thing on this side. On the right side, as those windows get a little farther away from you, they're gonna curve a little bit more. It'll get a little thinner. These ones that are on the end, you can hardly see them. Maybe just a couple of dots and dashes there. And then just wherever you feel like you need to do a little hatching through there. Some dots and dashes. That's about it. You can, again, you can just kind of block it in and then think, well, I can come back into it later. I need to. Any of those little crenellations or recesses are just done as little L's, and then you just you can put little dots in them, you know, just to darken them up a little bit. You know what crenellations are, right? The little recesses that go up and down and up and down and up and down. Those were actually little. Um, barricades for people to hide behind, archers and whatever. And it's a sign of defense. So in the Middle Ages, you had to have license to crenellate from your king. If you didn't, and you put those on your castle, the king would come and make war upon you. Because it meant that you were going to go to war. I needed that license to crenellate. If you need some shadow, just do these little quick hatch lines. If you're barely touching the paper, they'll be very light and thin.
our tower is kind of rounded. So if you have just kind of a kind of rounded as you go, just kind of do a little very light arch. It'll give it the illusion that it's round. And then the same brick that's down here, that's what you do, that meandering brick back and forth. When you look at these little supports that are here, I'm just going to do one, two, three. And you kind of move over and do the same thing. One, two, three. A thick one, medium, and a tiny one. One, two, three. One, two, three. There is a pretty hard edge down here, so I suppose you could, you could use your, a line to define it to begin with, but break your line. Just don't, don't do a straight line. Do little pieces like this. I'm just going to use these little lines, these little edges. So where the shadow is, I just start out with these little lines, and then I'm going to come back into it. You can hatch through it like this, because it's pretty dark. And then all that stuff that you do along here, you just continue that through. Here's a little window. Hatch, 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 hatch. Does anybody know why windows and castles are tall and thin? To keep people from getting inside. It had to be just narrow enough that a man couldn't squeeze through it. So here's more of that meandering, just back and forth, and there's your brick, back and forth. Sometimes you spend a little more time on one brick, and you have like a dot for another brick, or rock, whatever those are, or cut stone, actually. So I want to get down to the water to show you how to do the water, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just hurry through this hopefully you don't get lost
Okay, we can come back up into this a little bit later. Um, I do want to just show you what to do with the water. Where the water goes, it's so easy. Think of water. Water all le always lays flat. You know, they used to use water levels when they were building things. They put a tub of water there and they could tell what was going to be flat because it's always flat. So you, you want your water, your lines to go back and forth. And it's more of that meandering stuff, but it's more of a snake-like very back and forth. And you, you do some long ones, some short ones, and it's just back and forth. Keep it very level back and forth like this. And that's... It's that same kind of meandering. But all you want to do it is in the areas that are dark. So I'm going to pick up on this little dark shadow here. I'm just going to go back and forth, back and forth. And you can leave some out however you want to do it. Here's some more over here, back and forth. Here's that edge, back and forth. And you just kind of want to concentrate where the dark edges are. You can even let your pen just kind of skip across the surface. Here's some more over here. Back and forth. And you kind of want to just concentrate on those dark areas. Here's a window. Let me just go along here and just back and forth in this window. There's one window. There's a window over here. There's a couple windows up here. Back and forth. Okay, does that make sense? That's probably the easiest water you'll ever draw. Just back and forth. Some, some are long, some are short. There's no rhythm. There's no logical way to do that. It's just kind of spontaneous. And then the shine of whatever it is that you're drawing will come through. look like that reflection. And that's basically it. Keep working on the castle and then I'll show you how to do the trees in the background. This edge over here, I'm really not, I didn't put a few little dots and dashes just to show where my edge was, but it's going to be defined by my brick as it comes up and around like this. At this point, I really want to get rid of this graphite. So I'm going to finish out the water. And then get rid of that graphite. There, that looks better. That graphite just makes everything muddy. And hopefully you're seeing that your scribbles are becoming something. That all of a sudden, it looks like something nice.
And at this point, I'm just kind of scribbling. I've got my structure. I've got my con my composition in. Now I can just kind of scribble in the darks. Darks and lights. That's all you need. I do want to do a few trees in the background. Trees are pretty easy, really. Um, there's a pine tree back in there. I can show you how to do that. But I'm just going to start with these little M's and U's. So the, the top of the trees are going to be little M's like this. And the bottom of the trees are going to be little U's. And everything in between. So sometimes I'll have M's. Sometimes I'll have U's. Sometimes I'll just do little swirls up through there what you want to do is look at your the shadows of the trees and draw those in using those m's and u's so i'm just going to go i'm going to start out over here i'm just going to start out little m's and u's and wherever there's light leaves you just leave them out the m's and u's are for shadows So if there's a light tree, just leave it out. A little dots and dashes, whatever you feel like you need. But for the most part, just leave a lot of that tree out. And there you go. Piece of cake. Here's a pine tree. I'm just going to put little dots and dashes where the trunk of the tree goes up the top. And then the rest of it is done with just little zigzaggy lines. I'm just using this edge of these trees to kind of uh, define the edge of the castle there. Just trying to be very light and fluffy with it. Yep, it's just scribbling. Controlled scribbling, scribbling with purpose. Hopefully you had a fun experience today and learned something maybe and even tried something that you've never done before. And hopefully somewhere along the way, it's made your life a little bit better because art makes life better.